Dear students, I would like to continue with the chapter Rocks and Minerals. The second part of the chapter which I'll be taking up now is the rocks. As I've already told you that the rock is an aggregate of one or more minerals. According to the petrologists, the definition for the rock is rocks may simply be defined as all those materials which form the crust of the earth, whether hard like granite or soft like clay. Now we take up the classification of the rocks. Rocks are generally classified into three types. One, igneous rocks. Two, sedimentary rocks. Three, metamorphic rocks. Now what all these types of the rocks are, we'll be taking up one by one. Now first we take up igneous rocks. The word igneous has been derived from a Latin word ignis, which means fire. So here's a picture showing the igneous rock, how it looks like. Generally, the igneous rock is formed due to the cooling and solidification of the magma. Igneous rocks are formed, as I've told you, after the solidification of the magma. There are further few characters of the igneous rocks, which I would like to share. Number one, all the igneous rocks forming the materials are liquid hot and sticky, which moves towards the surface cracks and joints. Because as you know, in the interior of the earth, the temperature is quite high. So the magma is also in the liquid form and it keeps moving wherever it finds its way, either through the cracks or it makes open its way through the weak rocks. Number two, igneous rocks, they are also known as the parent rocks or the primary rocks. As the name says, they are the parent rocks. So that means they are the basis of all the other two types of the rocks, that is the sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks. Igneous rocks are formed through the solidification of the magma. Here is the picture. You can view this picture. It will show you how the magma is found in the interior of the earth. And when it comes out on the surface of the earth, how it forms the different features. If you look at the picture, it shows that if we talk about the rocks which are formed on the surface of the earth, so that means on the surface, because the temperature comparatively is low, there's a fast cooling. And when the fast cooling takes place, the crystal formation is very fine. When we talk about the medium cooling, that means the crystal size is also of the medium size. And thirdly, when we talk about the interior of the earth, where the temperature is already very high, the solidification and the cooling of the magma takes a long time. So that means the cooling is very slow. And when the cooling is slow, the crystal size becomes very large. And thus the minerals formed and the rocks formed, they are very coarse grained. So in the picture, you can see the lava is finding its way to come out on the surface of the earth. When it comes out through the vertical cracks, this is known as dike. When it comes out through the horizontal cracks, it is known as sill. The rocks which are formed beneath the surface of the earth they are known as the batholith. And the rocks which are formed on the surface of the earth, they are known as lacolith, or we can call them the extrusive rocks also. Now we take up the further classification of the igneous rocks. The igneous rocks can be classified on the two different bases. One is the chemical composition of the rock, and the second is the texture of the rocks. 
Now we take up the classification which is based on the chemical composition. So dear students, on the basis of the chemical composition, the igneous rocks can further be divided into two types. One is the mephic igneous rocks and the second is the felsic igneous rocks. Now look at the screens and you can view how the mafic igneous rocks they look like. So mafic igneous rock means it's a combination of iron and magnesium. So it is called the ferromagnesium mafic igneous rock. Now the second as I've already told you is known as the felsic igneous rock. This rock contains the silicates of aluminum in the combination of sodium, calcium and potassium. And if you can look at the screens, you can just view how the felsic igneous rocks they look like. Now we take up the classification on the basis of the texture. So on the basis of the texture, the igneous rocks can be divided into two types. One is the texture of the rocks means the size. And the second says the patterns of the mineral crystals which are present in the rock. Now the size of the mineral crystal depends upon the cooling of the magma, how fast the magma cools. As through the diagram I've already told you that if there's a rapid cooling of the magma, so that means the crystal formation will be very small the fine crystals will be formed in the rock and if the slow cooling takes place which is generally beneath the surface of the earth the crystal formation is very large and lastly if there is a sudden cooling then there is no crystal formation in the rock and that type of the rock is like the natural glass. Now the second type of the rocks is sedimentary rocks. As the name suggests sediments, sedimentation is the sedimentation of the particles in the different forms leads to the formation of the sedimentary rocks. So this deposition of the sediments may be by the different agents. It can be a river, wind, glacier or the sea waves. So when they deposit the material which is known as the sediments that leads to the sedimentation of the material and the rock formed is known as sedimentary rock. Now just for your information if you look at the screen you can see the two visuals of the sedimentary rocks. One visual says that the sedimentation done by the river. So when the sedimentation is done by the river in the water. So that means the sediments will take place according to the weight of the sediments. So down below we have the conglomerates, on the top we have the sandstone, further we have limestone, then we have the silt formation and finally we have the mudstone. So that means this sedimentation is according to the weight of the deposits. And the second visual you can see that is the solid sedimentation of the deposits. So when the layer after the layer is formed, so the pressure of the layers results into the formation of sedimentary rocks. Now we talk about the stratified rocks. In this visual you can see again the layers of the rocks. So what is the stratified rock? The sediments are deposited layer after layer because once the layer is deposited further the sedimentation takes place above that layer which is already present. So that is the form of the strata and consequently these rocks are also known as stratified rocks because this formation is layer after layer formation and that is the rock which is known as the sedimentary rock. Now what are the hard rocks? The sediments are deposited layer after layer and the new layer deposition, the underlying old layers 
experience the deeper burial. I would like to explain you dear children, when there is a pressure of the upper rock on the lower rock, then what happens? The lower one gets buried deep, with the result it becomes hard. Now this hard formation of the rock, we give it a name that is known as the lithification. Just look at the screens, you can have a view of the lithification. Now what is the lithification first? You must know that the process of turning the sediments into the hard rock layers by the pressure. Pressure of what? The pressure of the upper rock on the lower rock that results into the lithification. Now there are the two outstanding examples of the rocks. One is the sandstone another is chalk. What is sandstone? It is made from the grains of the sand which is consolidated, cemented and compacted into a rock. Now what is cementation and the compaction? Cementation means when it becomes hard because of the pressure of the upper layer. Now chalk is made up of the millions of the living calcium carbonate skeletons of the microorganisms. Now the third type of the rocks is metamorphic rock. So metamorphic word is derived from a Greek word that is meta which means change. Morphic means form. So that means change in the form is known as the metamorphic rock. So how this change takes place? This change can be because of the two reasons, one the heat, another can be the pressure. So when this change takes place, the different characters of the rocks, they change. That is the color, hardness, texture and the mineral composition of the rocks change. So I have already told you that the metamorphism is because of the two factors one is the heat, another is the pressure. Now what are the types of the metamorphism? There are the two types of metamorphism, one is dynamic, another is thermal. Thermal is further divided into two types, one is contact metamorphism, another is regional metamorphism. Now what is dynamic? Dynamic is the change in the rock because of the breaking up of the rock structure that is known as dynamic metamorphism. When we talk about the thermal metamorphism, so thermal is because of the effect of the heat when the original color or the hardness or the composition of the minerals change that is the thermal metamorphism. And contact is when the rocks come in contact with the intruding lava or magma. So here you can view the contact metamorphism. And regional metamorphism is the widespread change of the rocks due to the deep burial and the earth movement is the regional metamorphism. This picture shows you how the regional metamorphism takes place. Now the processes and structures associated with the metamorphism, this is very important children, just see that there are the three types of the processes which take place, one is foliation another is lineation and the third is bending. Look at the picture, it will show you how the lineation takes place. It's the mineral grains which are drawn out into the long thin pencil like objects and the picture they are self explanatory showing the lineation. Second is foliation, it's a continuing process of metamorphism. The last large percentage of the minerals are assembled in the parallel orientation of the rocks and the last is the banding. As the picture shows, there are the different bands of the different colors of the rocks. And lastly, as I told you in the beginning, there is a igneous rock which is known as a primary rock. So the rock cycle takes place. So first we have the igneous rock changing into sedimentary and then the sedimentary and the igneous rocks, they change into the metamorphic rocks. So this is the final picture 
showing the rock cycle, how the weathering takes place in the igneous rocks and it gets uh, into the sediments and the sediments are deposited and layer after the layer the sedimentary rocks takes place and then with the further action of the heat and pressure the igneous and the sedimentary rocks they get converted into the metamorphic rocks. So dear children I would like to sum up my lesson that is the second part rocks. We have discussed about the different types of rocks, their features, how they are formed and the rock cycle, how it takes place. Thank you. Mm -hmm.